This is what we've been sent back. Uh, uh, we were told that this is a, a hallmark in human history. At first glance, this doesn't strike me as, as particularly illuminating. Right, right. But you have to remember that this is the first really good photo of a world that we're all quite familiar with. We all remember as in childhood learning about the ninth planet, Pluto. But really, it's just been a point of light to us before or a mark on a star chart for 85 years. But now here it is revealed in detail, and tomorrow, assuming all goes well and the images come back, we're going to see it in at least 10 times this level of detail. Take us through the journey that New Horizons has, has, has embarked upon. We're talking about you know, launch in 2006. It takes yes. four and a half hours for the information to reach us back here. And that gives you an indication of just how far away Pluto is. Pluto is a very long way away. It's really hard to imagine, but, but even at its closest to the sun, it's still about 30 times further from the sun than the Earth is. So as you say, Pluto launched back in 2006. In 2007, it made a close approach to Jupiter. That's pretty much on our doorstep, relatively speaking. And since then, it's just been sailing out to this outer region of the solar system that we call the Kuiper Belt mm -hmm. to visit the most significant object, actually the largest we now know object in the Kuiper Belt, which is Pluto, um, which also it stands to teach us a lot about a world that we already feel like we know a little bit, uh, even if we haven't actually got that much information about it yet. It's, you know, it's going to be an explosion of information over the next few days. But it's not just Pluto that we'll be learning about, as you mentioned, the Kuiper Belt, but also one of the moons, Charon, as well, we're going to be taking so, a closer look at. So that's right. Actually, all of the moons uh, of Pluto, Pluto has five known moons. We've got Charon, which is the largest one, the significant one. And then more recently, we've got Styx, Nix, Hydra and Kerberos, which are all much smaller. I'm sensing a mythological uh, nod there. Yes, in the this is within the, the mythology of the, the Roman underworld, where, where Pluto is the, the god of the Roman underworld. Uh, and so all these moons are very appropriately named. Now, they're much, much smaller. Charon and Pluto, certainly are the significant ones. But actually, studying the composition of these smaller moons will help us to understand more about the, the evolution of the Pluto system, which seems to have had quite a complicated past. Now, explain to us, the, the probe itself, New Horizons, has, has gone dark at the moment. We're not hearing anything from it. Now, wh why is that? Right, so if you actually look at images of the probe, you can see it's got a very big antenna on it, a big, a big radio dish. And the radio dish can't be, can't be moved uh, separately from the spacecraft. So the spacecraft is covered with instruments. They're all pointing out in different directions. And what the spacecraft has to do is actually turn itself around to point the cameras at Pluto, Charon, and the other moons uh, of Pluto. And in the process, the antenna has to be pointed away from the Earth. So the spacecraft has gone dark. It's been given this predetermined flight plan to carry out, and hopefully we're going to get a, a phone home um, a little bit after midnight tonight, our time, uh, when the spacecraft will begin to downlink, that is to send back the high-resolution data. And this high-resolution data, I mean, information we've had up until now has been limited to a few pixels across, essentially, but this high-res data giving us an insight into to the origins of the solar system itself? Absolutely. So we think the Kuiper Belt is a relatively untouched uh, and almost primordial part of the solar system. It's so far away from the sun that much of the chemistry in the Kuiper Belt hasn't been destroyed by solar radiation or affected. So the Kuiper Belt actually teaches us what the solar system, what the inner solar system may once have been like. And that kind of helps to, to fill in some of the gaps about our knowledge of the formation mm. of the solar system. But also there's this really interesting idea that Pluto is a bit of a treasure trove of, of secret uh, geology and secret features that have never been seen before. And I think we stand to find that they're going to be very interesting, very unusual, and perhaps quite colourful too. Fingers crossed. Tom Kers uh, from the Royal Observatory. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you.